All right. Let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. What? It's Friday again. <laughs> so. Welcome back, everybody, to uh, another episode of the Warfighter Tobacco Podcast. Uh, I'm Scott. Oh, I'm, I fucking did it again. <laughs> what is going on? I'm John. That's Scott. <laughs> John, this is why people mix us up. I know, right? It's my fault. <laughs> that, I, that's I, Justin. <laughs> I always thought it was because y'all looked so much alike. <laughs> right? No. Oh, why? It's two in a row. It's all right. This is what happens when we record earlier in the day. Uh, yeah, we're, my coffee hasn't even kicked in yet. Sober. <laughs> oh, speaking of sober, we had we had a war, we had a tobacco guest on our on our Freedom Friends podcast that we were not sober, and we we did not stay sober. We will we will have him back on this one. Yeah, but not like that. Not like that. <laughs> I don't know what happened to us, but. Uh, well, I do know what happened to this Irish yeah, car bombs. We got there. roofied. That's Th- what happened. They're delicious, and uh, we drank way too many of them. <laughs> that was uh, that was the drunkest I've been in a long time. Yeah, I, yeah. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Yeah, I don't need to do that again for a while. No, it's out of my system. Yep, yeah, I'm good for like this year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was uh, it's a little bit of a callback to the last Warfighter episode where we were talking about. Oh yeah, the, the drinking. Okay, game. so I think we have some results. Right? <laughs> we did talk about this. Who could outdrink each other? Right. We did it actually. And I think and uh, I you think, put it very well. I don't know if you remember it. Yes. Or not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I outdrank you, but you handled it way better. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Quantity wise, I did better. Yeah. Functionality wise, you did way better. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, because I think, I think the total. Is Mikey and I did eight Irish car bombs. Dylan did seven and you did nine. Yeah. Bingo. Yep. That's crazy. Like, I remember doing like four or five, maybe. I don't remember. But that was in a course of like two and a half hours, maybe. Not yeah, even. But still, I don't remember you mixing it that many times. You know what I mean? Like, every, every 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> like clockwork. And then I was, all, I was also drinking, I think, whiskey in between. Yeah. So, we had a, yeah. I know I poured an Eagle Rare. Um, it was about every 15 minutes, but number eight and nine for you scott were back to back because dylan was like i'm gonna i'm gonna pass on this last one yeah. and you were like that's a very responsible decision slide that over here <laughs> <laughs> so you took the those last two back to back yeah it was so. impressive yeah but yeah, yeah we we killed what did we do i think it was eight i think we did 16 cans of guinness an entire bottle of jamo and there's probably this much Bailey's left. That is insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As as uh, as the sober guy that was in the room, it was wildly entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Uh, Dylan was I, a champ, though. Yeah, we covered a little bit of tobacco stuff on that podcast, but I don't remember. I think it started out with the best of intentions. And, the next day. And it just ended. Mikey calls me the next day, and he's like... Uh, <laughs> He's like, hey man. He's like, sorry, I had to dip out. He's like, I lost track of time. We ran late. I, you know, I wasn't on the debate. And he's like, how was it? Then I was like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't. I got to go ask I, Justin. I sat here and slept. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. I remember fighting very hard to like try to pay attention and come up with something to say. <laughs> and then every now and then I'd just be like, fuck it. <laughs> but, I, I, I believe. To Scott's credit, he was there when we started recording, and he was there when we ended yeah. recording. Yep. <laughs> and it was, I and I tried. I, I remember actually like closing one eye and trying to focus and listen. <laughs> the effort was like, there. It, I tried to make it. I just <laughs> I could not do it. The uh, the uh, Guinness took over at that point. So. There was there was a couple times where Scott started like dozing off, and like I I'd, I'd look over at him as he was like popping back up and he'd look at me and, and I couldn't control myself <laughs> laughing. And I was like, either one of two things is going to happen. Scott's going to come in tomorrow morning and be like, Ooh, that was a, that was an interesting night. Or he's going to be like, the fuck were you laughing at so much? <laughs> Cause I was, I was laughing so hard. I was sweating, <laughs> like, but <laughs> it was um, a good one. It was uh, I mean, it was a rough next day. Oh yeah. It was. Yeah. But yeah, I mean like, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we got that out of the way 
You know what I mean? Like now I don't have to drink like that again right. for a very long time. Yeah, I think I'm I'm good for a while. Yeah. You know, I do love Irish car bombs though. They're so like, good. Oh god, they're so good. Uh the thing is I I have to quit with one. Like I should do one more often. Yeah, we we did it more often that no, night. I should do one more often throughout the year. Oh, yeah. Like, so you're not just like make it up for the non non drinking right. of them like over I, 12 I sh- months in right, one night. Right. I should just do one per month instead of <laughs> 12, 12 a night. One night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that math maths. I didn't even pay attention to it. And I mean, it really wasn't the show to do it. We were just having fun. Yeah. Uh, but what do you think it would pair with? Oh, fuck. Uh, do you know what I mean? Though? I th- like, I think you could get away with some infused stuff with those. Maybe. I, honestly, I th- well, I think I only smoked like a half a cigar that night. Oh, I smoked like five. <laughs> I was just power. I just I don't smoke. I think them. I smoked like a half a cigar. I I honestly am not sure. I just yeah. I just remember reminding you every fifteen minutes. All right, it's car bomb time, boys. I wasn't even yeah. paying attention to six. I, I brought three out when we started, and then in, on the break, I went and I grabbed two more, and then. I literally, I just grabbed myself and walked out the door when yeah. we were done. And so, and when I, in the morning, when I came back, there weren't any sitting where I sit. So I was like, should I smoke I think, five cigars? I think I grabbed two. Yeah. And one is still sitting on the chair out there. Okay. So, uh, I don't, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Unless I'm, I could be completely wrong. I have no idea. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll, well, I'll have to watch it. Yeah. What would it kind of comes out? I don't know what it would pair well with. It paired well with whatever I was smoking that night. Yeah. It, uh, I smoked a little bit of everything. Yeah. I had a night shift. I had a Sumatra. Um, I had one of our Oscuro Maduros. I don't remember after that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those ones. Yeah. Our original idea was we were going to do a joint episode. So it was going to get released on Freedom Friends and on Warfighter. And, uh, about five minutes into it, we we're like, "Yeah, that's not happening." <laughs> About five minutes before that, yeah. I pretty much said that's not going to happen. I, yeah. s- I saw the writing on the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was a, it was definitely a Freedom Friends episode. Yeah. But to make up for that, since we had Dylan on and he is the uh, the manager at Cigar House, uh, he wanted to pimp that they have a event coming up tobacco on, on house. tobacco. Sorry, my <laughs> bad. words are hard. Uh, tobacco House. They do have an event coming up September fourteenth. So. Make yeah. sure you check that out, and uh, we'll get we'll get him on the Warfighter podcast. Super cool, dude. He was super cool. He handled it well, very very well. He handled it yeah. well because if he yeah. if he left here assuming that that's what we do every Monday night, <laughs> like, thank God we don't do that every Monday night. Oh, that'd be so bad. Yeah. We used to. We used to. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, the previous uh, episodes that we released was a, uh, a factory tour. Um, so Scott was down in Nicaragua, and uh, I was here, and we used technology to make life easy, uh, and we showed you guys a little bit of like uh, kind of behind the scenes at the factory, and uh, just you know threw a whole bunch of information out there. Uh, but based on that, we got a whole bunch of questions from one dude. <laughs> which um, is okay yeah no it's totally fine uh, I mean, a lot we, of them are very good questions as well we probably only have one listener so that makes it tracks right yeah but uh but yeah justin you want to throw some uh some questions our way yeah we'll or throw, throw them up and we can go um, yeah let me let me do that y'all can y'all can hit them hard and fast because we we definitely got yeah, a, yeah. a healthy amount to cover today yeah so some of them um i mean like one of the questions is what are the new uh blends that we're working on uh, well, we can't really let the cat out of the bag on those. Uh, when are they going to be available? Uh, kind of the same on those. Once we get uh, solid timelines, um, I mean, there's so much that goes into releasing a new cigar between design work, packaging, bands, boxes, uh, you know, finalizing the blend, all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, the one thing that we don't ever want to do as Warfighter is um, under or overpromise and under deliver. We don't want to be like, hey, we got this new cigar. It's going to be out next week. And then a year later, we're like, uh, so Nicaragua happened. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't have this cigar out yet. Yeah. Um, when we first got into this industry, we uh, unknowingly made a mistake or two like that in the first like six months. Yeah. 
And then we were like, oh, this doesn't. Well, and life's different. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, we're, I'm still having the biggest problem is that's the box factory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I went down there specifically to work on boxes mm -hmm. and to like, and I left with nothing done. Here are blueprints. Yes. You can literally, if I did this, the same thing that we did on the blueprints for a box, if you did that for a house, they could build you a house. That's how detailed the blueprints were. Right. So you hand them here. I right. need you to make this. Yeah. Right. They come back and they're like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, dude, that's not like, oh, uh -huh. yeah, it's frustrating. It is frustrating. Uh, like there's a language barrier and the, the guy that runs the box factory, yeah, he, does, he doesn't speak English and he doesn't understand Spanish. I was going to say the language barrier so, is his ability to understand Spanish <laughs> or yeah, or sign language or blueprints <laughs> or like, I, yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so it's. It is what it is. The good we'll thing, get through it. <laughs> the good thing is, is the other boxes that we've been working on for a very long time. Those ones are finalized finally, uh, so that's a nice headache that got out of the way. Um, but it, you know, like going back and forth via email or phone calls, text messages, whatever, it just gets lost. Yeah, and so it takes five minutes of being there, and you're like, oh, I just solved six months' of problems. <laughs> well, thank God, because I didn't realize we had two years worth of problems so uh, that's true yeah but we do have some new boxes coming out that'll be kind of cool yeah so yep those will be really fun um so let's hit let's hit some of these uh you know, quick and dirty uh how big are the fields it just depends um how big are the fields in america yeah some are an acre some are a thousand acres yeah it just depends. yeah it depends on the farm um terrain uh, yeah all that kind of yeah. fun stuff but uh, on on average i would say you're looking at five to 25 acres per field yeah yeah probably and some apples yeah in there <laughs> the 25 apples um how big is a tobacco plant in nicaragua uh so a full a full grown tobacco plant um is taller than me uh ish yeah it's about six between i don't know Six and eight feet. And it depends eight feet. where in Nicaragua. And it depends what variety of tobacco. Yep. And it depends how it was grown. There's a lot. Uh, sometimes you don't want tall plants. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so it, it just depends. But on average, you're looking between your height and, yeah. and probably five and eight. Yeah. No, yep. between five and eight feet. Yeah. That's probably um, fair. Let's see. Uh, they are all not roughly the same size. No. Typically in the field, they are. Typically. Yeah, they're the same size as each other. Yes. Usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As it's na their neighbor. Yep. Um, how long does it take from germination to harvest? Um, I want to say three months. Yeah, three to four months. Um, Can you Google that? It's actually pretty quick. And uh, so they get to rotate crops throughout the year. Um, well, but har harvest, rainy, rainy harvest also takes, it's harvest not takes one day while. because they pick the bottom leaf. The next week they pick the next leaf up. The next week picks the next next leaf up. So, the uh, harvest isn't like a one day thing. Yeah. And then it depends if there's going to be rain. If there was yeah. rain, two to three months. Yeah, two to three months. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, what are the steps from planting to ready to ship? Well, <laughs> I mean. There's too many to have. That's more than a podcast worth. Well, I, that literally covers three completely separate entities of the cigar industry. Industry. Yeah. You you have the start to finish of the farming side, the yeah. start to finish of the processing so you, side. You, 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 have, you have seed to harvest. Yep. Actually, you have seed to drying in the drying barn. It's kind of the yeah. You know. And, yep. then, and then you have and then you have the processing. Yeah, drying barn. All the processing yep. to be put into bales. Debating, sorting, bailing, yeah. aging, yeah. that whole nine. And then you have the whole factory side of it. Yeah, which is the unbailing. Rolling, yeah, unbailing, Prepping. sorting, rolling, banding, boxing, <laughs> packaging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a huge, huge question. Um, I mean, f to answer that the best way, um, what are the steps from planning uh, to ready to ship? Uh, instead of giving you the steps, I'll give you the timeline. The timeline is three to five years. 
Yeah. So everything that goes into that in three to five years is the answer to that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we can do a full. Can we get a full tour of Warfighter Tobacco headquarters? Uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, we can do that sometime. We got some offices and a warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we can we could probably do something. Um, including the receiving a shipment to sending them out the door. Um, we've done uh, some videos in the past about that just during, uh, you know, when we're doing fulfillment from like a Black Friday weekend or yeah. something like that. Uh, we kind of have all hands on deck. Um, but yeah, it's just we have a nice little system worked out for our fulfillment. Uh, where everything's staged and and ready, so it's uh, you know simple. Yeah, it, we're not you know walking fifty seven steps to pack one order. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a it's a pretty streamlined. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know if we'll show that or not. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, is a factory only producing warfighter products, or do they service multiple brands? So the factory is Tobacco Lair Carreras. Uh, they make Esteban Carreras. They make us uh, a couple other brands, uh, and then they do some house blends for. Uh, some shops, um, yeah. Uh, so, like, we we used to be with Placentia, right? Mm -hmm. Placentia is a little bit more famous now because they came out with their own brand. But like five years ago, Placentia didn't have its own brand. But I think they just started it five years ago, yeah, five or six years. But before that, it, yeah, it was, they just made cigars. Right. That was it. And so, every other brand uses Placentia. Not every brand, but like. I bet they do 70% of the industry. Well, if you so if you walk into a humidor at a cigar shop, about 30% of the cigars in that humidor were made at Placencia. Yeah. Um, so, and I mean, so they make a, a shitload. When we were with Placencia, we, I mean, we were smaller than we are now, but we were, to them, we were so low on the totem pole that uh, we got no, we got pushed back a lot. Like it just wasn't they we we were not their priority. It was when they had time for us they would they would make us cigars, uh, and uh, so the reason we switched to switched factories because we wanted to have more hands on. We wanted to be uh, a bigger fish in the factory. And we wanted to be able to do cool, fun projects. Yeah, we wanted a little yeah. bit more like hands on. Freedom. We wanted to be able to go down there and and you know have a conversation with everybody and right figure out what we need and and so that's when we landed on tabacular carreras uh and uh yeah we're happy with the factory yeah. there so um are there any brands that have an entire factory farms themselves oh uh, yeah shitload yeah <laughs> yeah there's, like, uh, there's placentia yeah uh, there's so many yeah there's um, oliva oliva just um, in esteli yeah and there's probably i don't know 50 factories at least you know yeah. what I mean? From a small Padron, you know, two pair yeah. factory to a massive Perdomo. You know, yeah. Uh, there's all, yeah. J. My C. father, Newman. there's a shill. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a ton. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's just Nicaragua. Then you got the DR, you got yeah. Honduras, you, you know, all over the world. Um, any of the kids interest taking over when you guys are ready to retire? Well, so this trip was the first time I took the kids to the factory. And I only took my two youngest kids because my, my older kids are one was deployed to Guam at the time and one was uh, in the Coast Guard yeah. floating in the middle of the ocean at the time. So um, I don't know. I don't know if I'll have the company still then. I hope I kind of do. Okay. And I hope one of them at least is interested in doing something with it. A follow on to that. Will we ever retire? Uh, I mean, I would sure. love to, but I think I'm just going to die. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we keep doing fucking Irish car bomb nights. So retirement's looking, looking kind of impossible. That sounds like a great way to go though. <laughs> Going out the same way I came in. I just hope I go like that night and not the next morning. Cause the next morning was, uh, yeah, was not, well, I wanted to go more the next morning. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, no, I don't know. You know, if uh, if there's ever a a big company that's interested in us and they write us a big check, you know, we we're not opposed to growing a business and selling it. Uh, I'm not opposed to growing a business and handing it over to my kids. Uh, right. You know, I'm not opposed to any of that. I, yeah. you know, what's anybody any business owner's goal of owning a business? You know, one of those two things usually. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, 
What are the new sticks blends? Uh, can't really mm, yeah. go over those. Uh, when are they going to be available yeah. eventually? <laughs> uh, is it a San Andreas wrapper? No, nope, that's nope. our, that's an old blend. That'll be a new marketing. Yeah, we're rebranding that. That'll be out. I don't know. Yeah. So we did, <laughs> we did, we did the the Hero Sports cigar, which was a San Andreas, and it's a very good San Andreas. So we're we'll just rebrand it and come back out with that one. Uh, it'll be the same blend because we worked hard on that blend. It's delicious, and it's a good blend. It is delicious. So. Um, you mentioned being able to walk to the factory from the hotel. Is it a safety thing, time saving, hungover thing that you don't? Uh, no. More of a lazy thing. Uh, yeah. And I mean, it's it's just far enough away to be inconvenient. It's, it's far enough away where I don't want to do it. Yeah. But it's close enough where I could if I had to. Yes. But. but like, it, but it, you know, like if I have my, my vehicle is there. Yeah. So if I need to go from the factory to into town to do anything, I, want, I don't want to walk back to the hotel. Right. You know. It's and just, typically we're not there with just us. Like yeah, typically we have a group. Um. And most of the people that are there on the group, like every single time we went down with more than people than just you and I, yeah, there's no way we're making them walk anywhere. No, you know what I mean? Like it's, I mean, no, but they wouldn't want to either. No. Like it's, we're, we're different. We'll walk anywhere. Anytime doesn't matter. Yeah. Like it, I wouldn't say it's not a safety thing. Mm -mm. Uh, I think it's more of just like, I don't and want to. We've never, the hungover thing. Uh, oh, yeah. We've totally gone to the factory hungover. But. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's it, it's probably, what, a mile? Like, yeah. So it's it's just the. Yeah. It's just like, I, I could do it. I just yeah. don't want to. Right. Yeah. The same reason I don't walk a mile. Here? To go get something. I Like, uh, do you walk to the mailbox at the end of the street? No. <laughs> why because we have vehicles and side yeah. by side we got uh, all these other things yeah, and, I, and i have shit to do yeah. like in my it's time, 100 degrees yeah, my, my time's limited in, yeah. in Esteli, so it's like yeah you know. so maybe the time saving we could chalk it up some time saving on there yeah. too but it's uh, definitely not for a safety reason no um are the polones all the same leaf or no within every individual polone most of the leaves are the same yep each polone is probably different yeah, because everything in that pilone uh, is going to age the same. Yeah. So, uh, what does your travel kit look like? Actually, you know what? I like this question. Yeah. This is good. Um, so, <laughs> when you travel, the two two parts. Yeah. When you travel stateside and when you travel international, what are your mandatory items like you have your your normal clothes like yeah. okay socks under, I, I think there's whatever two ways to ask this yeah i think there's if i'm going to check a bag versus if i'm going to only carry on okay yeah that works too yeah if i'm only going to carry on yeah then i will put a bic within my uh, i think you can carry on yeah a BIC. international too i think yeah so yeah bic is no big deal um if I check a bag, so going to Nicaragua this last time, knowing what I know now, this is probably my, I don't know, eighth, tenth trip there. Probably more than that. <laughs> but uh, so I bring an ashtray for the vehicle because I, I rent a vehicle. Yeah. I bring a can of osium. Yeah. Uh, for the rental vehicle. Uh, I bring the old school triple flame four dollar lighter yeah yeah <laughs> yep empty empty no 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 no. full no i bring an empty really i don't want to get yeah i always i don't, don't want to lose my, my i always paycheck. bring one full one yeah i don't want to lose my paycheck uh just because butane is non-existent in central america <laughs> gonzalo has a hookup now it's expensive yeah he's yeah he's got a hookup okay now, so um but yeah uh i brought uh i brought a bluetooth speaker for the beach i brought uh inflatable bags to bring to bring bottles of booze back mm -hmm. uh that you can get off uh amazon, amazon. yeah yep. they work really well um i'm trying to think of the weird stuff yeah so i got i have a travel phone charger station that has it, it folds up flat and has a cord and then i can unfold it and it has a haptic charger for my phone airpods and apple watch um so that's like just go to for my travel see i, wow. I tried to use something like that 
Yeah. I have to have something I plug my phone in with a long cord. Yeah. Half the time I fuck, I fall asleep and it's like, <laughs> right. It's uh, right there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, but, uh, so that, uh, obviously shave kit, um, normal clothes and whatnot. Uh, I have to travel with a CPAP because, uh, yeah, <laughs> I die when I sleep. <laughs> um, so that makes things a little interesting. Uh, I remember when I first got it, I used to be like super careful and I'd bring like the bag it came in and all the night right. I just fucking throw it in my suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> just like, it's like a fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's really nothing out of the norm. Uh, the, the hardest thing with traveling in, you know, with the cigar side is uh, your lighters and cutters. And yeah. we've had nightmares and we've had. I mean, all kinds of different experiences traveling with lighters and cutters. Well, so usually a cutter you can carry on. Yeah. Especially like a guillotine cutter or a, a, v, a, a v, v cutter, cut. right? We went through San Salvador and. Uh, yeah, I, I had a lighter and cutter. Yeah. But the lighter was empty and in my checked bag. Yeah. And the cutter. I think the cutter was in my checked bag, too. No, and, the cutter. The cutter was in my. I think the cutter, or no, the no, because they stole. It was my. Uh, it was that uh, one. My original M8. Yeah. And then I think the Rebel, or Verano. I can't remember which one we had at the time, because uh, this was it was the Verano. This was during COVID. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, they're in my check bag, and for some reason in San Salvador Airport, even though you land, and you walk off the plane, and you go immediately into the terminal, you don't leave. You have no access to anybody else or anything else. Then you have to go through security again. Yeah. Right. And so that time going through security, they're like, you can't. Or what did he say? He was like, this is a problem. Yeah. And then you looked at him and you're like, take it. No, I, no I, problem. I, 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 I think I think I said, I said, yeah, keep it or something. Yeah. And I said, no problem. And he's like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's like motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, but I mean, years ago when we first you know, six, seven years so ago, leaving Esteli too, you can't have a cutter in your carry on. Right. Yeah. And it makes no sense. Yeah. But, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like six, seven, eight years ago, we used to get lighters stolen all the time. And we used to literally keep them in the box brand new, never even filled them with a note. This lighter is brand new. It has no fluid in it. And they would steal the lighter. Yeah. And it's just like, guys. But I started putting it in my, in my uh, bathroom bag. Yeah. And f- they never yeah, noticed yeah. them in there. Mm-hmm. So, and I make sure I put a bunch of other bullshit in there so it right. hides it. Uh, uh, but in theory, actually, t- I take it back. You are 100% allowed to carry a cutter in your pocket on a plane. It's on TSA's website, yeah. the whole nine. You cannot carry a butane right. torch. Technically, you're not supposed to check it either. If it's empty, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, yeah. And then coming through, so I usually have global entry, but. Uh, this time I was with my kids who do not have global entry. Oh, it was like, sucks to be you. <laughs> uh, kind of. Right. Uh, but uh, they they asked me if I had any cigars. I don't know why he specifically asked me that. Maybe because of my T-shirt yeah. or something. I said, well, yeah, I have cigars. And he's like, well, how many? He said, like, 10 or so. And I said, like, 20 or so. Yeah. And he's like, okay. So I have never ran into that going through global yeah, yeah. entry because I had a hundred or so. Right. You know. So the cool thing about but cigars, it's, go ahead. it's like 50 per person coming back to the United States, I believe, mm-hmm. but my kids were minors. So I didn't know if I could use that. <laughs> like 50 of them are theirs, you know, like I, I didn't know I'd say <laughs> that. So, um, so the, the limit of cigars that you can bring back are, so the penalty if you bring back more and they and they find out is you have to pay the import tax on them. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And you get to keep them still. Right. Right. It's not like, oh, my God, we have to confiscate these and you're yeah. in so much trouble. It's like, no, they just want their money. Yeah. You know, that's it. And it's the same thing going into Nicaragua. If you bring brand new stuff, like I went there with Craig the one time and he, he had new kids clothes with tags on. Yeah. And they took them. Yep. Uh, because... They want he, you to spend your their, your money there. Well, he they they wanted him to pay the tax on yeah. bringing whatever in. Yeah. So anything you bring into Nicaragua, it's a it's a 
it's a deal. It right. can be a big deal. But yeah. Well, it's the same. Like if we, you know, there were times where we, we tried, we hand carried, um, you know, some bands and, or yeah. whatever down to the factory. And it was the same thing. They were like, if they don't say anything, they don't say anything. But if well, they do, they didn't see it. Yeah. If they do, then you got to pay import tax on it. Yeah. And it's like at this point, whatever. Um, Sometimes yeah. it'll cost you. It'll be like <laughs> the next day. So, yeah. I think you're going to go back and pick yeah. it up. Yeah. Pain in the ass. Well. Has Gonzalo ever visited the headquarters? Not yet. He, uh, he comes to the trade shows. Yeah. So we'll see him in, uh, you know, in January in Vegas and stuff like that. But uh, uh, we'll be in New Orleans this year. But I know he does. He wants to come here. And I said, you know, we probably should fly him out here one of these times. Maybe I can get when he's here, maybe him and Craig, we can get to come by. So, yeah, yeah we'll see. See what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that covered. Uh, Those are good questions. Yeah. Um, the questions from the episode. The drinking Olympics. What was that? That was when we were talking about how we could gauge who could drink more. Oh, yeah, yeah, See? Too many drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely could not have shot anything the other night with the uh, Irish car bombs. Oh, no. I would have been good about four in, maybe. <laughs> After that, there is no way. Nope. Don't even put a gun in front of me. <laughs> Holy cow. Or you could have been like, oh, you want me to do with that? <laughs> yeah. Should have set up a little, like, airsoft. Oh, we should. Oh, that'd be... That'd be the, fun. Yeah, we can do an airsoft. Yeah, because that way, even if something happens, yeah. it's just like, yeah, I'm not dead though. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, I do have uh, a, a a question to start a discussion. Okay. Um, and this doesn't have to stop here. It's 2024. You can be whatever you want to be, John. That's a hundred percent true. Um. So say I wanted to be somebody in the cigar industry. Okay. Right. That has a social media platform. Okay. Um, related to cigars. Okay. And, uh, and people look at me for information. Yep. Right. About cigars. Right. Um, and uh, instead of doing that, I decide that I'm going to post my political viewpoint. Okay. On the page that normally people go to for cigar information for are, you know new are releases you, or reviews are you a or whatever. cigar brand owner or are you a no you're you're cigar media cigar media yeah i don't know like like i like to think that we don't push our political views on anybody but we state our political views quite often but we don't do it on our social media platforms. We'll do it on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I would never do it on Warfighter Tobacco's but page, so, like or even so, my own, really. So, um, like, but what would, I don't know how I want to state this. Like, would there ever be a reason for us to put something out on Warfighter that had nothing to do with Cigar. Oh, I was just going to say, sometimes political stuff, there's... We've done posts the, in the there's, past. There's tobacco consequences, so we've posted... Yeah, that. but and we've done some posts in the past where it's us smoking cigars and whatever, uh, talking about people that are in politics, right? but not people that are currently in a race. Oh, there was one time that we did one. Yeah. It was a Hillary for prison. Oh, that's when I owned the gun store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we it went out on Warfighter as well. Oh, okay. But it was very appropriate at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's just, it, 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 it's interesting to me. Um, to it see depends it. what was said, I suppose. Because I, 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 I mean, I feel like if you want to get into politics on whatever platform you have, I mean, it's a free goddamn country, right? Yeah. That's 100%. not not to say there's not going to be some consequences you might not expect or uh but so it, what i was what i was going to follow that with is so seeing some of the posts and seeing some of the comments on the post and people are like i used to come here to get cigar information yeah and now the one place that i went that was cigar information is now politics so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going somewhere else now you know well those are the consequences yeah to your free speech but but like at what point is it like, okay, I don't care about 
the my consumers. I don't care about my viewers. I don't care about the traffic I get anymore. I'm just pushing something that in theory you have absolutely no control over. Like I'm pushing a, a, a candidate that there isn't anything I can do to whether or not that yeah. candidate wins or loses or their policy right. or the decisions they make or anything. It's like this facade that you feel like you have control because you like that person. But that person doesn't give two shits about you or what you do or what you think or your viewpoints or anything. And they're just going to go according to their agenda anyways. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm kind of mixed on this because like, it's not a, it, it is not, there, there's, it's not black or white. Like yeah. it's not a, you can or you can't. Yeah. You know, that's what I said. Like, I discussion. Never, there's no I, right or wrong answer. I, to this. I'm just, I will say, I will say what I will do, what I'm, who I'm going to vote for. I don't care. I'm not going to hide that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'll say what I stand for. I'll, I'll give you, uh, some reasons. Uh, right. I'll give you some reasons why I won't vote for who I don't vote for. Uh, and then I'll I usually follow it up with, but none of them like you or give a fuck about you. But you uh, do you would do that? That would be in a conversation. That wouldn't be in a post. Yeah, like just a, like I couldn't imagine saying, if you follow Warfighter, go vote for it, whoever. Like yeah. I couldn't. I would never do that. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to incur or doing a post about a specific candidate. It has yeah. nothing to do with cigars. Nothing to do. I don't know. You know, like but, okay. So for I'm going to use an example. Uh, I don't know what four or five years ago right we we ran into don trump jr we did and we took a picture yep. and we posted it we did and we were small enough where most everybody commented was positive yeah now gurkha also made a post yep and i think they may have worded it a little differently than we did or something but they got shit on they did they got shit on like oh i can't believe gurkha would post this i'm never smoking one again yep. yada yada like you know, yeah. Um, and so but, I, it, it made us look at it and be like, Oh, you know, maybe we dodged a bullet on this one. You know, yeah. I don't know. Like, but I don't know. I don't know. I, it's hard. It's a hard one. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I mean, we believe what we believe in, but we're also not going to push it on everybody else. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to, I'm yeah, but I'm also not going to encourage people to vote for for the, like, Somebody you don't want the you don't want to vote for. Well, but I have reasons. Like I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I'll, uh, I will encourage a healthy debate. If anybody disagrees with me, like I, I let's have a right. debate. Right? Like I will always have a conversation about it. Yeah, but I'm not going to try to push my viewpoint on somebody else unwillingly. Like I'm not going to do it just out of the blue. Yeah, probably not. You know what I mean? No, I don't care. But if I, I if, if somebody engages me in a conversation, yeah. then I will, okay, oh, yeah, hey, this is my viewpoint on this. Or uh, what, why do you feel that way? I see it like this, yeah. you know? Uh, but it's just the, the what I was trying to get at, it was just like, why start that in an environment where the, the politics aren't there? Yeah, cigars are very neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like why bring the that divisiveness into a, a place right. where it's inclusive? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it it blows my mind. I just I don't yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just see it differently. And then actually the, this other thing that I wanted to talk about, it, it kind of fits in perfectly with the with the warfighter theme. Um, and we've kind of talked about this before in the past uh, in regards to us. Um and that's, uh, you know, if we put out a, a, a bad product, our own people will tear us apart. The veteran community yeah. will go after us. So right now, uh, in the political, I don't know, shit show that's going on in the country, yeah, um, there are two vice presidential candidates that are both prior military, right? That are getting it. Both of them are getting attacked by the veteran community right now. Yeah. Well, they're doing a good job attacking each other too, but and they are. Yeah. yeah. Um and it it's kind of interesting to see it all. Well, and it's hard to know what to believe, right? Cuz like um who's the democratic uh the new vice president uh, what's his name? Waltz. Waltz. Right? Like I had high hopes at first. I was like, okay, this guy like and I had no yeah, idea I was who like, he man, was. I was like, right? He was an E9? Yeah. Or, yeah. He's an E9 oh, wait, in the wait. National Guard. Wait, the, he was 
No, no, no. He was an E8. Right? But he said he was an E9. But I don't know if that's true. Oh, it is. Yeah. You know, like, you know. He said he was a command sergeant major. And then when he retired, he retired as an E8, a master sergeant. And it's because he never went to the sergeant major course. Okay. Right? So he was eligible for promotion. Oh, okay. But, yeah. When he, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's a lot that's, that's going on in there. But one of the things, right, about military service is it's documented. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Right? So when you like say. You can lie about it. When you but s- it's hard to, like, it's hard to get a lie to stick. When, when you say you did something and you didn't do it, uh, people are going to know. They're going to find out. Right. It's not like you were the only person that ever served in the army and nobody's there to verify you, Mm -hmm. especially if you've been in for a decent amount of time. The more time you've been in, the more documentation of where you were, what you did, who you were with, the more people you served with that have firsthand experience with you. You know, like there's there's just so much. And so, like, by saying things that you didn't do or embellishing stories to a point where people or other people you served with could be like no man yeah it's not how any of this works you know right. um saying you were deployed when you weren't like all of these things are giant red flags in a veteran community and it tells a lot about a person yeah right um but so do you think that there's a way where you can be in a spotlight in a political position or any position for that, um, and not have your military service get brought up to the the, the spotlight. No, no, because I mean everybody's interested. One military service is interesting, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah. m- most people, whether they've served or not, it's interesting, right? Because there's a lot of unique things you can do life wise in service that just typically you won't. You, you can't, can't do, do it anywhere outside. else. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, that's right. And so it's interesting. Yeah, it's going to get brought up. There's no way. There's no way it can't, right? And there's so many. Well, it's public records. There, and well, there's so many politicians that have no military service at all to begin with. Yeah. That when there is somebody with one, of course, it's interesting, right? right. And like, okay, this guy was in the guard, right? Yeah. Uh, for 20 some years. Yeah. Like that's. It said 24 years. Right? Like that's yeah. service. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah. Like he wasn't just playing the game at that point, you know? Yeah. It was 24 years. Uh, I think he signed up in 81. He got out in 05. Um, he was in the uh, Nebraska National Guard. Yeah. Where at? Where does it uh, say? I, uh, it says French Service, United States Army, Nebraska National Guard, Minnesota National Guard. But I see he was also... Had postings in Arkansas, Texas, the Arctic Circle, New Elm, Minnesota. So in 89, he earned the title of Nebraska Citizen Soldier of the Year. Okay. Yeah. So what did he do in the Nebraska National Guard? Because I might know people who know him. Yeah. You know, like it's. He was, so the, his last duty station was field artillery. Yeah. Um, but it says right there. You know, well, this is also Wikipedia, but yeah. He retired as Command Sergeant Major on May 15, 2005. His rank was later changed to Master Sergeant for retirement benefit purposes since he did not c- complete required additional coursework. Okay, so he probably wore Command Sergeant Major because the, they probably gave it to him. Because he, he was in that position. In that position. But that doesn't mean he wasn't ever a Command Sergeant Major. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Because I remember when I was going through... uh I had like I I got pinned my E5 and I had two years to complete BLC before that rank could be stripped and I'd go down to corporal. Right. So it's like you yeah. can you could get promoted early. Yeah. And when I went, there were dudes that were like two months out from getting stripped of their E5. Yeah. And so yeah. that was like they got pushed and everything. So I'm sure it was the same thing all the way up. Like I I didn't go to PLDC when I got my E5. Even though, it, yeah, it was weird because we were deployed. Yeah, yeah, but in garrison, how it's supposed to work is you're an E4P. Uh, you don't. You're up for E5 promotion. Yeah. They send you to PLDC, right. and when you graduate, they pin you your E5. Yeah, right. So with mine, with my scenario, 
I never went to PLDC, which is the the leadership school you have to go to to get your yeah. your sergeant EU five. Um, I would have had to have done that though before I thought about trying to get my E six. Yeah, you know, or if, if I ever changed duty, you know, duty stations, whatever, I would, that would have been like, oh, hey, you you have to do this. <laughs> How long is the sergeant major's academy in the National Guard? Because if he was serving in serving in a governmental position, he might not have been able to go. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I don't know because it's a. I mean, it's a time commitment. It is. Uh, and then I eighteen months. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, if you're, you know, that's hard. Yeah. No, that's to go to first art school. I just don't know if National Guard is different. I'm assuming it's the same core because, like, like when I went to BLC, it was with active duty guys and reserve guys and the whole nine. Yeah. But I mean, if first sergeants is 18 months, then yeah, I can't imagine theirs is like two <laughs> or something. Like it's got to be that pretty long. Super long. It really does. I don't know if that's correct. Oh, that's, yeah. hold on, hold on. No, 18 months of rigorous distance learning in a two week resident course. Uh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. That's awesome, yeah. Man. Um, I wonder if it's because it was close to the end of his retirement. Well, I heard it was, there was a deployment there that he didn't want to go on. And so that's when he just got out. Yeah. I mean, no, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the news is saying. You know, the crazy thing about all this is like, how hard is it for that dude or for whoever to just be like, Hey, actually this is what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so just so, you know, the rumor mill stops, right? This is really how it went down. <laughs> it's uh, I just think it's interesting. Well, I, th I think it's interesting too, that he was on the marksmanship team and wants to ban the rifles that he used to shoot in his competitions with. Well, it's funny. So he, there's, he touts himself as an outdoorsman yeah. and he hunts. Yeah. Right. So in Minnesota, yeah, south of Minneapolis, St. Paul, you can't hunt whitetail deer with a rifle. Right. You can only use a shotgun. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, what? And that's, I mean, I, I graduated high school there. Yeah. And so... It was like, oh, deer hunt, let's go. They're like, yeah, you got your your rifle shotgun barrel. I'm like, my my what? They're like, no, I I I have a rifle. They're right. like, you can't use that. I'm like, well, what do you mean I can't? Like, oh, you can use your shotgun. I'm like, this is how am I supposed to take a deer with a shotgun? <laughs> like, you yeah. you shoot ducks with shotguns. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting to. Yeah, but yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I I still go back so often to I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago or something but don't don't waste your time and energy on people that don't give a fuck about you yeah, and that's I, every, yeah. all of them in politics like yeah. people people that will give up friendships relationships with family members all yeah. because of political views because they will die on the hill defending someone who has no idea that you exist and yeah. probably doesn't give a fuck about you yeah. and I'm like that's so crazy to me yeah like when when was when was the last time y'all had like a heated argument with a friend about politics? I don't know, heated because most of my friends who are have who oppose have opposing political views as me, we can talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. And, but those those are friends. Yeah. Like yeah. the the people Like I got that, one guy that I was one guy that I was deployed with, and this guy. Is, oh my god, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, he's so hardcore left, and I, I. But there was a there was a moment where you guys weren't friends. There was like a, a short little. It was I think it might have been like a couple weeks or whatever. But maybe it wasn't, a month or two. Wasn't because of me. No, it was him. Yeah. And then you reached out, and then oh, yeah, sorry, you know, but yeah, I remember when all that went down. Yeah. That was funny. But no, I and I, you know. I guess I should look back at the texts and see how time favored who and what happened there. But uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just funny. Like, no, like, I don't know. You can, you can have a, I, I would rather talk to somebody who disagrees with me and like, who has a very opposing view of me. I would rather have a conversation with that person because I might learn more from them. 
all my friends to sit around this fucking table. We all are on the same goddamn page for the most part. Yeah. What are we going to learn from each other? You know? So I love my social media feed. I get the extreme on both sides. Yes. And it is so nice. Yeah. Because I get people that are in the middle, you know, whatever. And, you know, I get, I'm not saying I have a huge social media following by any means because I don't. Right. But I just have a wide variety of friends. <laughs> so, and I get the, like, I almost want to like tag the other person and the other person's post <laughs> and then just watch, you know, you just, mean? you're just putting the Russian bots against each other. Pretty much. <laughs> so I, for some reason, I've never followed this one, but it is always in my feed and it was Biden wins on, uh, on Twitter. Okay. Right. And that was just the name of the thing. Right. Yeah. So, and the headlines were always fucking taken out of context and right. whatever, right? But then when Biden dropped out, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go, I gotta go find it. I gotta go find it. I wanna see what he's saying. I wanna see what he's saying, right? And then it just it disappeared and became Kamala wins. So <laughs> are we not gonna address that elephant in the room? No. Like and that's the best part. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope that Biden just shows up at the at the DNC and he's like, oh, hey, by the way, everybody actually voted for me. I uh, thought, didn't they already <laughs> have that? Uh, uh, yeah, because that was when yeah. uh, they brought up. Oh, fuck. What's her name? This oh, female, yeah. this female rapper that was like twerking on stage. Megan the Stallion. Megan the Stallion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was mm -hmm. interesting. Although, to be fair, we had the Hulkster come out and fucking tear. So like it was. Yeah. yeah. I have I have a question for you guys, yeah. and it when when y'all brought up the the time that y'all had the picture with with Donald Trump Jr. Yeah, if you see someone post a picture with fucking Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, do you automatically assume that person agrees with a hundred percent of what that politician stands for? Because I've seen so much of that. Like I don't know. It it'd be like meeting. So I I don't believe. Like, so we put up that picture, Don Trump Jr. Yeah. I don't agree with everything that Trump says. Yeah. Or that Don Jr. says. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I guarantee you, you don't either. I don't agree with everything that Kamala Harris says or Joe Biden says. Oh, uh, yeah. There might be a couple things. Maybe. Uh, it just depends. But now, what is it? Do I agree or disagree on what they say? Or do I agree or disagree on what they do? Because those are two different things. Regardless, but... Let's go back to the picture thing, right? Mm -hmm. Say you were at Shot Show mm -hmm. and you were getting drunk with the random Secret Service guy that yeah, you were yeah. drunk with, right? And but say that dude's like, "Hey, I'm I'm Kamala Harris's." Yeah, Secret you want to meet her? Detail. I'm like, "Fuck yeah, let's go." Yeah, and we would have taken the same. Picture. Goddamn right, we would have. Yeah, and we would probably would have posted it too. Yeah, might have had a little different comment or a different caption, <laughs> you know. But like, uh, the yeah, but no, if you like, I so in the in the military. You get people in leadership positions that you don't like all the time, but there isn't a goddamn thing you can do about it. Yeah. Kind of like the presidential election or any, con any election in this country, whoever the winner is, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Right. You can hate that person all day long. Yeah. But in the military, you still have to respect the position or the rank of that person. Oh, I think it's supposed to be the same way with the commander. In -chief. It is. Well, and it doesn't matter who it is that yeah. the commander in chief. If I have an opportunity to meet them, yeah, I'm going to with the utmost respect. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I representatives, senators. I will same. I would meet Kamala Harris, and I would try to be so respectful that she looks up my social media and is like, Oh fuck. <laughs> All right. Know? Like I kind of liked him, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, that's uh it's, it's the same mentality of the people that want to be like, Oh, why are you, why are you giving this person a platform and stuff? And it's yeah. like, well then how, how else are things supposed to yeah. have a, have a conversation and get everything out yeah. in the air? Yeah. Like that, that has always made no sense to me of someone that's like, oh, well, you're on the right and you're giving this person on the right. left a platform. And now, now imagine you, you, you got to meet whoever for 10 minutes and have a conversation. Oh, that'd be awesome. Right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask these things that are just trying to. Well, you, one day you said this and yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Like, I'm not no. going to go down that road. I'm going to get something new. I'm, I'm going to try to ask a question where she has to scratch her head a little bit and be like, oh, you know, or ask it in a way 
where it, it challenges, you know, I, like I'm trying to get an actual yeah. thought like, out of it. You know what I mean? Like jelly or jam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the difference? <laughs> Miss Vice President. <laughs> Oh my God, what a fucking video that would be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Secret Service had a bad day or two. They would not have a bad day on that question. Did you see that the, would, uh, the chick that was at Trump's assassination attempt was on Vance's Secret Service detail? Oh, really? When he walked over to Kamala Harris's plane to Air Force oh, Two? Pat? <laughs> uh, was that her name? No, but did you not see all the memes? Uh uh. Oh, you haven't? No. What memes? Justin, Pat, the Secret Service agent. Oh my God. I cannot believe you haven't seen of that. The, of, that, of that chick? Of the, the Secret one, Service. Of the one that was all eight of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I have seen those. Okay. I just didn't. I, yeah. yeah. There's been a lot of memes lately. I didn't remember the Pat one. <laughs> Pat off of uh, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> They're, they're gold. Yeah. I feel bad for her, the Secret Service agent. Yeah. Twitter has been gold for probably the past six months. Yeah. Um, in regards to information, there's a lot of it, and you have to sift through opinions. Yeah. But there's a lot. Like, I get more, I don't know, news or news articles yeah. off of Twitter than I do off of any other platform. Um and uh it's kind of nice it's it's interesting to see i don't know if i pay much attention to my twitter news yeah yeah um twitter is always a gold mine for just stupid bullshit yeah like, so like from politics to sports <laughs> like i saw something yesterday yeah yesterday during the day that egypt put out a notum which is like a uh, they they put it out for all their aircraft uh, and I can't remember when it's N O T A M. Um, and, uh, essentially it's like a, they put it out that says like, Hey, this is a no fly zone or this is a blah, 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 or whatever. Yeah. And it's like a notification that goes out to, you know, all their pilots, uh, that they're supposed to check before flights and all this kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, so the Egypt put out a notum saying that the entirety, all the airspace over and around Syria was a no fly zone between zero one and zero four hundred local time yesterday, okay. which would have been five p.m. here, right? And so I was like, "Oh, well, okay. Is this like a a little inside scoop of when Syria is going to attack or Hezbollah is going to attack?" Right? You know, because Egypt's like, "Hey, everybody, get out of the way." <laughs> you know what I mean? And then so all, all evening last night, I keep checking everything yeah. to try to see. And obviously, I haven't seen anything happen yet. But huh. I thought it was pretty interesting that. Yeah. Like, why Why just for those three hours? You know? <laughs> so that we could do something six hours later and we, nobody would see Yeah. Who kno- yeah. No, the world's a weird place right now. Yeah. It's fine if you stay in your little bubble. Right? But it's only weird on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, if you, get off, if you get off the internet. If you go outside, it's not weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was fine in Nicaragua. It felt like Nicaragua. Mm-hmm. Like nothing was changed. Nothing was different. It was fine here. Yeah. Yeah. I was in Port A uh, last weekend. It was fine down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be such an interesting viewpoint to be like a, a native living in another country and just looking at the U.S., Oh, like shit. Through the window. I had a conversation with an Australian dude who owned a hotel in Nicaragua. And he was, I don't know, he was probably 50, maybe. Yeah. It's not too old, but uh, so I was talking to him and we were, we got to talking about politics in the U.S. And yeah. it was right after the assassination attempt and right after uh, Biden, that day, that morning, Biden had dropped out of the race or something. One, yeah. It was real, real soon, right? And so we're talking and he's just like, oh yeah, we like to watch America just kind of implode. It's awesome. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, look, you realize on the ground in America, it's really not that bad. Yeah. Like the media makes it seem yeah. like the whole world's falling apart. But I said, for the most part, Americans get along with each other yep. pretty well. Like, you know. That's uh, like our, our importers down in Australia, yeah. the um, Garrison uh, Supply Company. Um, 
they, the last uh, Zoom call I did with them, I think it was a month ago or so. And, you know, obviously the world's in turmoil, according to the news. And so the, one of the first things that they said when they get on the call and they were like, hey, like, is America burning like it looks <laughs> like it is? And I'm like, actually, man, everything's totally like, yeah, it's just business as usual. Yeah. <laughs> There's certain places that you could go and see all the burning, but yeah. it's not everywhere. Well, the world is chaos. The UK has all kinds of craziness going on. And right maybe now. it's okay on the ground in UK. Maybe it's just the news, what we're seeing. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I got buddies over there. They haven't said anything to me. Right. Yeah, who knows? At least we're not in uh, Venezuela, right? Yeah. I can tell you that it's not fine on the ground there. <laughs> <laughs> that's in, that's crazy. That And they just arrested uh, one of the candidates. Oh, really? Yeah. The Maduro party just oh, arrested. Oh, shit. It's a, we, I mean... We try to do the same thing here. Yeah, but so the the <laughs> female candidate got arrested, live streamed her arrest. Uh, so that because they were trying to do it like shady. So nobody saw, nobody knew. Uh, yeah. I would say they, if they arrest Trump, he's probably it's probably gonna be live streamed. Like it's <laughs> I mean, there's been FBI raids that were live streamed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is just chaos right now, if you really think of it. All the shit in the Middle East, Ukraine and Russia, all the shit in Asia, yeah. China and North Korea, and so how, all how, the how do, rumor mill going on over there. How do, how do we fix it? Like, I, I don't know. You know? Yeah. Like, what would it take? And who, like, in the White House, what would it take to fix all of the conflicts? I mean, order of precedence, or not, uh, order of uh, priority? No. Time, what's the uh, timeline order? There we go. Yeah, start with the oldest to the newest. Yeah, so we'll deal with Russia and Ukraine first. So you're just gonna, hey okay, guys, what do you need? What do you yeah. want? How do you do this? You know, yeah, like okay, Israel, Iran. Okay, somebody just fucking kill the other guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what do you what do you do? You know, like because because that one, no, neither side wants a, 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 a ceasefire. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't no, think yeah. of that for a minute. Um, well, uh, yeah, like. Well, in that, in, 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 I hate to say it, but it's probably the truth. Ter- terrorist organizations are never going to agree to a permanent ceasefire. No, they're going it, to. It'll be a temporary one. So they can reorganize. And then they're, they're just going to continue doing their same bullshit. Like, it'd be like if, if Justin was our dad right now, right? Mm-hmm. And we sat here for two hours. But say two hours was the course of 20 years, right? Yeah. But every five minutes or so, I'd get up and just slap you in the fucking face, <laughs> right? I'd sit back down. And Justin would be like, John, knock it off. Don't fucking do anything, mm-hmm. right? Be the bigger man. Yeah. And then I'd get up five minutes later and do it again. Slap you right in the fucking face, yeah. right? And the third, fourth time, I, I, I kick you right in the fucking balls. And you're like, that's it. I'm kicking his ass. And dad's like, well, Okay, just this once. And then you're kicking my ass. But don't do it that bad. Yeah. Then you're like, you need to stop now. Yeah. You need to stop now. You're done. Well, if I stop and I sit back down, he's just going to do it again. No, he'll be good this time. I promise. Yeah, he told me he wasn't going to. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. You know, like. Yeah. (laughs) Stop hitting your brother. I wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, and it's like, that's the, the crazy thing about what's on what's okay. I got a question. Say the world goes to shit. We've all had enough. Where are you going in the world? What part of what, what country at first or for like, just like just enough of this shit. I'm, I'm out. Where are you going? Like, am I the only one doing it? Or is the whole world doing no, it? No, not the whole world. Okay. Like you, uh, like personally, like where are we going just to like, I'm going to retire. This is where I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Fuck everything else. I'm just done with it. Like I'm going to go be a hermit type. No. Done with it or, or just. Like what country is never going to get in a conflict that's going to be fun to live in? Like where would you go just to be like, this is, this is the new me. I'd probably go Caribbean Island. Nobody's going to try. Right. Why? 
But yeah. like you could say the same, like Central America, uh, probably not. Right. You know, um, like the Philippines. Costa Rica, maybe. <sighs> Costa Rica doesn't even have a military. No, but they're, 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 cl- they're too close to other people true. that could play fucking stupid games. You know, if you're on a Caribbean island. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're pretty isolated against, you know, no military is going to come in and be like, hey, tourists, get out. <laughs> you know, we're taking over these five star resorts because <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you, there's no oil. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you know, but like you think of places like Thailand, the Philippines, like, you know, things like that in Asia, which are, you know, beautiful, amazing places, yeah. super rich culture, very reasonable to live. Um there's a lot of expats that go there. Yeah. But or is that any better or worse off than Central America, say? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't I've, know either. I've never been there. Yeah. Um, I know people that, like, I, I have a friend or, uh, in Thailand, right? Time of their life. Yeah. No issues. Been there for years. But remember the, the customer we had at the store that used to sell beer in Thailand? He was a... Remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. He he never had anything bad to say. No, nothing at all. Yeah. Um, so but I just I haven't been there yet, so I don't know. Yeah. You know? Um, I'm afraid to go there because I've heard a lot of people that are like, this, this One, is yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, like uh I look at Australia a little bit, uh, just because I think there's Oh, there's no way. No? Not after talking to the guys oh, down there. that's true, yeah. It, it, everything is so expensive. And their government's kind of fucking them. And, they're, and it's like it's like living in Texas where it's just like you don't realize it, but you're like, oh, I'm just going to go head over here. And it's either like a six-hour flight or a three-day drive. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, it's, and everything there is trying to kill you. Yeah. Like that would be my downfall. My demise wouldn't be – like right now my demise would be me doing something stupid. If I moved to Australia, something would kill me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'd get an ant bite, and it's new, this new poisonous ant they've never seen before, and now I'm dead. <laughs> fist fight with a kangaroo. Yeah. And it was 100% my fault, because I've always wanted to know what the inside of a kangaroo pouch felt like. Yeah. And I, But I've also been told that it's extremely invasive to the kangaroo. I would imagine so. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah same. You just got to catch them when they're sleeping. Kangaroo's just like, I just wanted to see what the inside of his butt felt. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to kick that kangaroo's ass. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I get understand. it. Yeah, I get it. I understand. <laughs> but still, like, what does it feel like? Like, it, it's not slimy. It's got to be like velvet. It's, I don't know. You've put way too much thought into this. <laughs> You've never thought? No. Like, no, not once? No. Oh. Like the inside of a baseball mitt, I guess. Right? I don't know. <laughs> I could see it. <laughs> I could totally see that. <laughs> yeah i don't know i'd probably if i was just like you know what i'm done with society i'm done with the world yeah i'm just gonna go find my little happy place and i would probably be somewhere somewhere in the caribbean yeah um try to buy a boat and do charters or something cool. i wouldn't i wouldn't even want to it depends i would want to find something for work to keep myself yeah just by. something to stay busy okay. comparable to the skin on the inside of a person's wrist okay okay It's a little toasty in there, though. Yeah. Well, that's because it's uh, 105 degrees Fahrenheit in all of Australia. So, <laughs> yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Just saved you a fight with the kangaroo. Dog. I know. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> There's one way I know I'm not going to die now, <laughs> at least on, from my, on my own accord. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. So. We've been watching the uh, Planet of the Apes series. Okay. Uh, have you all seen that? Yep. So. Some of it. So basically a virus happens and the whole world yeah, yeah. goes archaic and everything. Do you think if something like that happened, do you think the country would come together and we'd all help each other? Or do you think Fuck it would no. just be complete anarchy and we'd tear each other down? I, I think it would. <sighs> so I, think, I don't know. It's a tough one. So for two weeks. We would try. Every it would be, it would be pretty awesome, yeah. Right, and st- until the food supply chain of the of whatever country it is breaks down, 
um, because about 90% of the, the populace has no idea where food comes from. Yeah. Or how to get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's the, what's the, the one thing, the quickest way to turn the U.S. into complete turmoil? Food or water? I say power. No. I say, I, think, I say if our power grid goes down, it's that's the quickest path to chaos. That would probably, yeah. Because then you're losing food. If you turn your sink on and there's no pump, like, yeah, you know what I mean? People, I think, like, I think power. Honestly, no I, think, phones. I think you kill, you kill the internet. It might even cause it. <laughs> How do I get anywhere? Imagine if, imagine you take New York City and people can't use their cell phones. Oh, yeah. I think that that would that would do it. You know what I mean? For for a, a major populous area. Um you know, like it would be the same thing like in San Antonio or in Houston or DFW, yeah. Austin. I think it would be the same thing. But you go to some of these smaller towns and they're like, "Well, <laughs> I guess my flip phone flip phone ain't going to work." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think between us fighting each other and then all the other countries that would want to be like, oh, they are at an all-time low right now. Let's jump in while they're weak. I think between those things, yeah. we'd be fucked. But I also think the only thing that might save us is another country trying to come in and be like, oh, we can take over the states. And then everybody's like, all right, we got to fucking yeah. put our shit aside yeah. to to protect ourselves. I mean, or, or do you think half the population is going to be like, okay, well, we're just Chinese now because they're going to help us. It's also true. They're going to give us our power back. So yeah. now I'm, now I'm a Chinese citizen. I don't care. That's also you true. Know, I don't like, think about that. Uh, there's going to be, obviously some of us. Is, what will say no. Is that? Yeah. I think I saw that too. It was where, um, the Nazis took over. Oh yeah. Yeah. The East coast up to the Rockies. Yeah. And, the it was good whatever show it was. i think it was japan took over the west coast up to the rockies and the rockies were like the only neutral zone yeah and then there was yeah and uh what show was that that was so good the man in the high castle there no, we go oh, no that's not the one but yeah it, that was the one yep oh, there's another one that's a little different that's a good show too mm -hmm. uh I've never heard of this. I'll check this out. That's a, good watch. Yeah, it's a great show. Is yeah, it? yeah, it's really good. Yep. It's like an alternative uh, history. Well, the, the crazy thing about that show, too, is they have this propaganda that's getting put out, right? So ultimately, this is the end goal. This is what reality is right now, mm -hmm. where the Nazis are on the East Coast, Japan's on the West Coast, and you got this little neutral area. But then there's these propaganda tapes that are coming, uh, that are coming out in the show that are like actual footage of World War II like the Victor V day and the victory parades and all this stuff in Japan and the Nazis are like hunting these people down, trying to get rid of it. Cause they don't know where this came from. And, and then it gets really, really, really deep and interesting. It's Ooh, fun. It's, it's a cool a good, show. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to check that one out. If you, if, if the, if the U S goes to shit and you do decide, Hey, I'm leaving the continental U S yeah. how are you leaving? What's your plan? Are you stealing a boat? Um, well, because if everything goes to shit, there's probably no commercial, excuse me, commercial flights. Right. Right. So it would be, you know, big barter, figure it out to get there. Um, I know that, uh, I mean, if, if it's a, if it's just like, I'm over it, I'm done. Like the world didn't end. You know what I mean? Right, right. Everything's business as usual. I'll just book a flight and I'll see it. Yeah. No, but I mean like. <laughs> but if it was like chaos, chaos, like the world is in chaos right now, yeah. I, I don't think I'd leave the country. Oh, I would, I think. No. Uh, there's there's a place that I would head to uh, that is oh, yeah. a, a little slice of heaven that's isolated. <laughs> um, but it has water. It has the ability to generate its own power. Yeah. It has sustainable food sources. Um, you know ways to defend geographically and yeah. physically so um if the world went to shit that's where i'd be uh but if it was a, a choice or i saw it coming yeah. <laughs> deuces y'all i'm out <laughs> i think i'm gonna learn how to fly real quick it's not the taking off that's hard i heard it's just the landing yeah i think i can figure it out yeah 
and the rest of it's just navigation. That's easy. Yeah. Pick a heading, watch compass. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've seen so many airplane crash videos. You just have to not crash that hard. That's right. If I'm just borrowing the plane to get me to, to yeah. a certain point, then yeah. I'm, yeah, I just can't die on landing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Which that I feel like most people could do. <laughs> like, it, is the plane going to fly again? Probably not. So good, but <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing is, is in theory, there's a checklist that gives you all the steps yes. to land. And it's sitting in the plane usually. Yeah. yeah. Like you, all you have to do is follow the directions. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. I think I could. I get if close. my If my life depended on it, I think I could land somewhere. I, if my life depended on it. The hardest part it. would be knowing when I took off from wherever I took off. How far or where, like, yeah, planning, where's my circle? Where's my, where's my circle <laughs> of distance? Yeah. Where do I need to land? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think, I think it was a life or death situation. I could put my feet back on mother uh, on earth again. If I, if I had to, Yeah. the plane might not be okay. <laughs> right. I might uh, not be, we, I mean, we all can skydive, right? Like, just go grab some parachutes That'd and so uh hard. and take off and maybe it's easier just to jump out that bitch than it is to fucking land it and if you're heading to an island right you can just keep you know eight thousand feet put it on a heading yep. out to sea call it a day <laughs> if you can't hit an island like i mean i think we're all we could all even there. if you miss the island you're not going to be that far off you it's true swim in yeah <laughs> so yeah yeah, that'd be fun. Then you could steal a great big fucking plane that you know would get you there in time, or in, in time, in, in, in enough in, I got with, two with hours en- with enough fuel. Yeah. <laughs> so. Ideally, be careful with the Boeing's. Well, it doesn't matter if you're just jumping out anyway. It's true. I had a, 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 a unless it's an Alaska Airlines one, then you can do a barrel roll on that. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd, oh, I would definitely attempt that shit before I jumped out. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I had a buddy of mine who left for Hawaii today and he sent a picture this morning when he got on the plane and he's right. He's like next to the door, like could yeah. reach out and touch it. And he was like, y'all pray for me. <laughs> I was like, Good luck, bud. <laughs> Godspeed. <laughs> yeah. Well, shit. I, yeah. guess, I don't know much else. No. Yeah, we covered a whole bunch of stuff today. Yeah, a lot of random random stuff <laughs> yeah um well thanks for tuning in again guys uh hopefully answer some of the questions that you guys had about the factory um and uh we'll try to figure out a way to do a tour here uh maybe and get that out um and then uh yeah other than that we'll see you guys next week uh go to warfightertobacco.com for all your uh smoky treat needs uh don't forget our double coronas are still on sale we're still clearing the, clearancing those guys out um yeah. yeah, anything else? Did I miss anything? Are we good? Good? Uh, I think we're good, boys. Yeah. Cool, cool. Then, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. All right.